Last night, Her Majesty the Queen asked me to pass on her condolences to the Indonesian president and the Indonesian people after the terrible earthquake and tsunami in Sulawesi last week. We have all seen the images of destruction, loss and pain on our TV screens. I have conveyed our solidarity to our Indonesian friends. Within minutes of the disaster last week, my team was tracking this crisis. Earlier this week, humanitarian experts from DFID and MOD joined us to help coordinate our response and make sure aid reaches the people who need it most. Within four hours of the Indonesian government's first coordination meeting, indicating that they would take international aid and setting out their priorities, we had put forward options for UK aid. DFID immediately committed £2 million to help. Reflecting the scale of the disaster, that was raised further by the International Development Secretary to £3 million. And today, the Development Secretary has announced a further up to £2 million to match fund the public's contributions to the DEC appeal that has just been launched in the UK. A Royal Air Force plane carrying humanitarian aid from DFID's warehouse in the Middle East left very early this morning UK time. A second aid flight is being loaded in the UK right now. A third flight is planned. We have moved staff into place in Balikpapan, the regional hub for the humanitarian operation. These flights together will deliver enough shelter, drinkable water, solar lighting and hygiene supplies for roughly 10,000 people. These materials will be moved on to Palu and will then be distributed by partners on the ground such as the Indonesian Red Cross. In addition to direct UK aid, the UK is providing significant support through core funding to the UN's Emergency Response Fund, the International Red Cross and the EU's Civil Protection and Humanitarian Operation. All this makes the UK one of the leading partners in this international response and amongst the most generous. We are working in close partnership with the Indonesian authorities, focusing on what is needed on the ground. Central Sulawesi is a remote and difficult terrain at the best of times. This tragic earthquake and tsunami have disrupted transport and brought communications in the area to a halt. The scale and the impact of this disaster is still unfolding. The Indonesian Disaster Agency estimates that there are around 80,000 people without homes. The number of fatalities is over 1,400. There is likely to be more bad news ahead. Getting aid in is hard, and getting it into the hands of people scattered throughout this area is even harder. We're grateful to the Indonesian authorities for their support and facilitation of UK aid. In coordination with the authorities, we stand ready to do more if it is needed.